That's right, it's me, I'm back, and I'm here with my black crown once again because it is time to royally drag somebody. Welcome to Court Council, where it is time for us to have a chit chat about cultural appropriation. I swear, I can joke, I say what's on my mind If I drink, if I smoke, I keep up with the guys And you see me holding up my middle finger to the world Fuck your ribbons and your pearls Cause I'm not just a pretty girl Greetings and welcome back to my channel. My name is Devana, your channel sovereign. Feel free to follow me on all my social media links. They will be linked in the description box below. Today is going to be kind of a heavy topic. Um, I'm very anxious to talk about it. Today we are going to be talking about cultural appropriation, particularly the appropriation of my culture, the black culture. God, I can't believe I'm talking about this insignificant creature. Danielle Brigoli has decided to pop off on black women for calling her out on appropriating our hairstyle. And I've seen, this has happened before, Kim Kardashian did it. Black people keep telling people not to do this and they keep doing it, which is just blatantly disrespectful. This is the first time I'm speaking on the issue and I got a lot to say. Whew. Okay, first off, the argument that you can't appropriate a hairstyle is nonsense. Yes, I understand no one culture owns the braid, the actual braid. There are many cultures that use that, but there are different styles of braids. Certain styles of braids are for certain cultures or developed by certain cultures, just like how the black culture has their own signature style of braiding hair. So no, I'm not saying black people own braids, but I am saying black people own certain types of braids. Corn rolls, box braids, Fulani braids, these stylistic braids that we have developed for our culture, for our hair, yes, it's a part of our culture and not just because of stylistic reasoning. Braids actually protect African-American hair. When I go swimming, when you guys see me make videos during the summer, you will see my hair in braids because I cannot, I could, but I won't go into water, especially like ocean water, with my free flowing natural curls. It will become a tangled mess. Braids protects our hair. Curly hair can be very fragile. It can be very dry because of the texture. Braids helps alleviate that issue and the style, the making styles that take hours to do, like washing my hair takes hours. If I have braids in my hair, it's a lot easier to manage. There is a purpose behind having braids. One issue black people have with people outside of our culture deciding to wear our cultural hairstyles is the fact that we can't even wear our cultural ha hairstyles without getting some sort of backlash. When I was a child, all of my childhood pictures my school pictures, my everything, all of my pictures as a child is me wearing box braids. In fact, there. All of my childhood pictures are of me wearing box braids. I wore them my entire childhood. It helped my mom manage my hair. This is our culture. So this was the hairstyle I wore my entire childhood up until high school, box braids. But I had to suffer because of that hairstyle my entire childhood. I went to elementary school with brand new braids and I loved them. Sometimes my mom would curl the ends of them. Y'all remember black people, y'all know what I'm talking about when you dip your braids. I had my hair dipped and it was curled and I loved it. And then I would go to school and the little white girls who didn't understand would call me names. Talking about, um, look at this horse hair, pull on my braids a style that I was very happy with, and then I would return home to my mother crying and wanting them gone, basically, because my friends at school made fun of me. I got made fun of my entire childhood because of my braids, because of little white girls who didn't know better, whose parents didn't teach them, who lacked the knowledge of diversity. This girl, me, this little girl, me and my brother, my whole life, box braids. I suffered because of that hairstyle. And now, white women who back in the day used to pick on black women because of this hairstyle, they wanna make it cool. And I'm just like, you know what? If you wanna wear it, fine. But don't 
trivialize it like it's not a big thing. That's the thing that gets on my nerves. When they come out and say, it's just braids and no one culture owns braids. Excuse me. You do not go to Indian people and look at them and take their sorry and say, I don't know what the big deal is. It's just a dress. You do not go to Japanese people, take their kimono and then just go, I don't know what's the big deal. It's just a robe. No, it is disrespectful. And on top of that, it trivializes something that we created. It trivializes something we take pride in. That is our thing. And for you to say, oh, it's nothing. It ain't a big deal. It's no different than anything else. That's highly insulting to our culture. So of course, black women and black people are going to get pissed off. And I'm not, obviously I'm not saying all white people or everybody outside of our culture does this, but I would highly appreciate the white people who know better to check these people because I am tired. I am so tired. I am tired of seeing things that black people make, that black people take pride in taken from us and then trivialized like what we made is not a big deal. You have to understand that black people do not have a lot. The little bit of culture that we do have is what we built ourselves after slavery, after being allowed to exist. Let me just have something seep into you because I understand that people don't get my culture, don't understand our anger. So I need you guys to understand this. Ooh, I'm getting emotional. My mother, damn, I'm getting, I'm getting emotional. My mother was the first woman in our family to be born with civil rights. Let that sink in for a moment. My mother, who is alive and well and still very young, was the first woman in my family to be born with civil rights. My grandmother was not born with civil rights, who was also alive and well and probably traveling the country with her bowling team. They were not born with civil rights, which means up until my mom, black people were blocked from schools, black people were not allowed to learn, weren't allowed to read. And this is what makes me mad. People are like, oh, I don't know why black people are so angry about slavery. It, it was in the past, it doesn't impact them. It impacts me every day. And it hit me as a child that it still impacts me because I couldn't track my family tree and write. Like black people couldn't read and write. They couldn't learn. We were purposely separated from our families. We don't have a lot of culture. When we got off of slave ships back in the day, one of the first things they did to black people was shave their heads because they knew that black people had this custom of being able to identify each other based on their hairstyle, which we still do today, which is why I'm trying to convey to everybody that it's still a very integral part of our culture. Everything else about our culture was erased. Everything was taken away, all of it. All we have left is what we've made within the recent years, like hip hop and certain styles of dance and everything. But from the olden days, all we have left really is that tradition of our hair. That's all we have. And even still with that tradition, we are made to suffer. I got made fun of for my hair. Gabrielle Union was just fired from her TV show. And one of the reasons stated was that her hairstyles were too ethnic. Gabrielle Union was wearing Fulani braids. And they said her hair was too ethnic. Meanwhile, we have people outside of our culture being praised for their brand new style, making it so popular, something that we've been doing for years, years, years. Yo, what are you saying? We have had little girls sit home from school, expelled, punished for their ethnic hairstyles or natural hair. Meanwhile, white girls are praised for wearing these same hairstyles. I, in recent, what, how many months ago, I just wore box braids and there was a very obvious difference of how I was treated with my braids versus with straight hair. Hey, oh, well, black women wear straight hair, black women wear blonde hair, so does that mean you wanna be white? Straight hair is not a culture. Black people can be born with straight hair. Asians have straight hair. Plenty of people have straight hair. 
plenty black women are born with blonde hair I know a black woman that was born with red hair so that that's not a culture it's not and I'm not saying that it is wrong to like a culture or to want to participate in that culture, but it is wrong to blatantly take something from a culture, then trivialize it like it means nothing and completely wash away where it actually came from. My issue is people outside of my culture are taking my culture and then saying, oh, it's just braids, like they didn't get it from somewhere, like it doesn't actually belong somewhere. If you are going to partake in African-American culture, in the black culture, you better be prepared to say, I'm doing this, I'm wearing this hairstyle because I love black culture, because I love black women and I think their hair is beautiful and I, I wanted to wear this style because I just love the way they style their hair. You better give props to where it is due, where it has come from. If you want to wear an Indian sari, you had better be able to stand up and say, you know what, I think the dress is beautiful and you better be able to wear it properly. Don't just put it on, throw it on and try to act like it's okay. There are proper ways to do things and you give credit where credit is due. No, not everything has to be cultural appropriation. I spent a part of my childhood living in Japan. I used to live in Japan. I own a kimono. It's hanging in my closet. I know how to wear it. I spent a week being taught by a Japanese woman in Japan how to properly wear and respect the kimono and which types of kimono, kimonos are supposed to be worn during what special events, which celebrations. I know that culture. I learned the language. I know how to read and write Japanese. It's not as good as it used to be, but I'm gonna get it better, I promise. But like all of my childhood homework is in Japanese. Look, this right here. This was a trip that I took with my classmates while I was in Japan. There it is. Focus, camera, making me look bad. There it is, right there. The Japanese culture is a culture I love and a people I love because they provided me a home when I was away from mine. They provided me a safe place when I was not with my mother and I invested in their culture. I learned the language. I learned the proper way to do things. I learned about them and I care about them. It's not that I would just ever take something from a culture and not actually care about the culture. When the tsunami hit Japan, I grew up on Okinawa, by the way. I did, that was Okinawa. But when the tsunami hit Japan, I was in the gym on the treadmill when that happened, when the news came on, and I started crying. I don't wanna cry right now. I started crying, and I got off the treadmill and immediately started calling everybody I possibly could, like trying to get back on my MySpace at the time, just so I can reconnect with everybody that I knew was still in Japan to make sure they were okay. I am invested in that culture, and I understand that culture, and I respect it. For people that are trying to partake in the black culture, first of all, this, what, what, Danielle Bregoli, she's a caricature of black women, and very negative car caricature at that. Let's also kill this argument. I grew up in and around Japanese culture, but that does not mean I get to claim it as my own. I love the culture, I respect the culture, but it is not my culture. I am not Japanese, I was not born in Japan, I'm not mixed with Japanese, I have no connection to that culture other than the fact that I understand it, respect it, and I, I, I lived around it. But I do not claim it as my own because it is not my right. I would never disrespect Japanese people the way that black people are disrespected. And I would never claim something as my own that's originally Japanese. Like that's just, it's just so disrespectful. I don't even understand how people think they can get away with that. I don't see people who are stealing from our culture helping the culture. I don't see that. And that's the problem, okay? If you're gonna partake in any culture, in any culture, you better respect it. You better respect it fully, you better understand it, and you better do it justice. Danielle Bergoli is an embarrassment. And you know what? Look, black people, I know that we pop off, we're so sensitive because things keep happening to us and we keep telling people not to do it and they keep doing it. Like, I get that we're fed up. I get why we're upset. Black people are just tired. We're tired of our endeavors, our creations going overlooked, being trivialized, and then somebody else becoming famous or getting praised for something we've done so long ago. Black people 
I think we do need to take some lessons from the Japanese and the Koreans. In Asian culture, Japanese and Koreans, they have these things called weeaboos. Weeaboos are Western people who idolize Japanese and or Asian culture to the point that it's like a fetish. Like they start trying to talk like an Asian caricature and they start trying to act like an Asian caricature and they adopt the outfits and they try to learn the language and they, it's like they're obsessed with Japanese or an Asian culture. I love Misaki. And that to I say I love you, Misaki. You're my baby. No. Wait, weeaboos are a joke. Like they're funny to laugh at. Go ahead and research the term on YouTube and watch Asian people react to weeaboos, these Western people trying to like idolize and play as if they're like Japanese Asian caricatures. It's it's hilarious. And black people, I think that's what we need to start doing with these other people who keep trying to steal from our culture, who keep trying to emulate our culture. I understand it makes us really upset because unlike the Japanese and the Koreans, they don't have to live with these clowns. But the black people, like, we have to live with these people. And not only do we have to live with these people, we have to tolerate these people taking our stuff and then just making money or becoming famous off of it. Like Asian people, I'm sure you can, you could, Y'all can understand. Asian people, could you imagine if K-pop was ruled by weeaboos? If all the famous people in K-pop were Westerners, you'd be pissed, right? You would be pissed. That's what keeps happening to black people and they keep making it seem like it's acceptable and it's not. Anyways, so black people, I think we need to take some cues from the Koreans and I'm gonna coin a new term for these people who still from our culture, who emulate black culture, even and, and they pretend like they're not emulating black culture, but we all know that they are. Like these clowns, we see what you're doing. So we're gonna call you, um, what, what's a good word? A wanaga. So a wanaga is going to be the term that I use for white people or outside people who are stealing from the african-american community stealing our slang stealing our dress stealing our style stealing all of that stuff y'all are wannagas and i'm just gonna laugh at you the same way asian people laugh at weeaboos because y'all are a joke y'all are some clowns now once again i am not saying all white people are like this i am well aware that there are white people out there who understand and even white people who don't understand, but they're trying to learn. I appreciate you guys so much. Like, I definitely appreciate you guys. Don't ever think that we're trying to block you guys from our culture. For those of you who actually want to learn, who want to experience, we will invite you to the cookout. No, we're not gonna give you a black card and you damn sure can't say the N word, but we will invite you and we will happily teach you about our hair about our culture, about what, hot combs. I know a lot of white people that still don't understand why we stick a piping, you know, stove hot comb through our hair. Like, y'all, we invite you to Thanksgiving dinner. We will show you how to make candy yams. We will show you how to season chicken, okay? All we ask that is that you be respectful. We're not trying to be divided. We're just asking for respect. Black people have not always been a proud and happy people. We are trying to learn to be proud and happy of the little bit of culture that we have. We are trying to learn to be proud and happy and uplift ourselves. We are, we are tired of being put down. We are tired of being made fun of. We are tired of ha not having the same opportunities. We are tired of not being respected. I know a lot of you don't think that nowadays it's hard being black. You, It's perceived from outside people that we have the same opportunities, but like, completely not angry. I'm trying to convey to you guys that even now, for me, I have been subject to racism. I have not had the same opportunities as other white females. I have been told that I am too black or I have been told that we already have a black girl so we can't use you. I have been told that things were not possible for me because I'm African American. To this day, as an adult, I have been told these things. I am treated different. I know that I have to act a certain way around police. I have been racially profiled. 
these things still affect me. It is not over for us. So that's why we are so snappy. That's why we are so angry because we're still putting up with it. And you guys just every little, it's like mosquito bites, like we're covered in them. So every, every little bit more irritates the hell out of us. And we're just like, we're screaming at the top of our lungs. Stop. And another example is Nikita Dragon. Nikita Dragon, you know, she tried to change the issue, change the subject when she decided that it was a big good idea to go ahead and wear box braids. Um, my biggest issue with that was not even that she decided to wear box braids, it's the fact that she decided to wear it as a wig. That's another thing that people outside of my culture don't understand. Box braids take a long time to put in your hair. It is very labor intensive and it is painful most of the time. If you have, if you got a good stylist, like you black women, y'all understand when you got someone snatching on those roots to put those braids in. It's labor intensive, it is time intensive. I wore the style and when I did my Fulani braids recently, well first I want you guys to guess, like just think about it. Think about how long you think it took for me to do this style. My Fulani braids took me three days to do. And I'm not talking three days, like half days, or I did maybe two hours each day, no. I'm talking full days for me to do. My hands hurt at the end of it. My hands were cramping. It, it felt like I had arthritis in my fingers after doing those braids for three days. Wearing those braids, wearing box braids, Fulani braids, any type of braids, there's a certain accomplished feeling that comes with wearing that style, especially when it looks good. Not only do you feel a connection to your culture, you feel a pride of having it done, having it made through the process. When Nikita Dragon wore the box braids, she was wearing it as a wig. I was like, girl, you don't even deserve to wear the style because you didn't go through the process to get them the way they're supposed to be done. You over here cheated. No, if you're gonna wear box braids, you need to sit down on the hardwood floor like most of us had to do when we were little kids or like a hard like chair and sit there for hours with a snack while someone tugs on your hair. And when you're sleepy and not off, you get slapped in the back of the head. And so you sit up straight and they can finish your braids. Like if you're gonna get them, you get them done right. It is not just a style, it is our heritage, it is our culture. Like to this day, there are some black women who are ashamed to admit that they cannot cornrow. My mother is one of those black women. She like feels bad that she cannot, she can braid hair, but she can't cornrow and she can't do Fulani braids, she can't do box braids. And it's like a shameful thing to a lot of black women because they know that it's part of our culture and they kind of should know how to do it. But they don't want to admit that they don't know how to do it because they, they know that they should. Like it's a cultural thing. How do you, as a black woman, how do you not know how to braid those sis? How you not know how to braid? But then again, nobody taught me. I had to learn, but I wanted to learn so I could do my own hair. And now I do do my own hair. And then I'm tired of people getting mad at black people for being upset as if we have no right to be upset. We have every reason to be upset. Throughout history, we have every reason to be upset. How long have we had civil rights? Only about 50 years, like not even a whole generation. And y'all still trying to take stuff from us? Yes, we have every right to be upset. How many times have black people told people, don't say the N word? And then y'all keep saying the N word. That's just blatant disrespect. That's like me telling somebody 50 million times, don't step on my toe. And they're like, sorry, and step on it again. Like we are blatant disrespect. We keep saying, hey, don't do it. Hey, don't do that. Like you expect us, you expect us to be nice about it on the 50 millionth time. No, they're not, black people are not gonna be nice about it. So I'm saying it nicely now, cause I, I've sat here and explained to, you, to everybody, white people, black people, just everybody. We're having a conversation here and I'm not even yelling or screaming. I'm just trying to get you to understand. Leave black people alone. Leave them alone. Stop copping their stuff. Stop taking their stuff. Cause y'all don't even do it right. Don't take braids and call it boxer braids leave black people stuff alone, okay? It is not a trend. It is not something to just have fun with because the thing that makes me upset is that the moment it's not a trend, the moment white people, like if white people today decided braids are nasty, ugly, and disgusting, a white person would never wear them again. Would never wear them again. Black people, meanwhile, we still would because it's our culture. We're gonna, we're gonna wear braids, Fulani braids, any type of braids all damn day, all the time. We're gonna wear them to work. We're gonna wear them to school. We're gonna wear them to special events. We're gonna wear them during our weddings. Are you guys going to wear them during your weddings? Are white people wearing them during their weddings? No, they're not. It's not your culture, just leave it alone.
Leave it alone, especially if you are not standing up in the black community. Leave it alone if you are not willing to go to your family, friends, and coworkers and say, the reason I'm wearing this hairstyle is because I think black women are beautiful and I think the culture is glorious and I understand their struggle and I'm a part of their community and I think their community is wonderful. If you can't go to your family and friends and coworkers and other people and firmly stand within the black culture, hands off the culture entirely. Don't touch it. You're not a part of it. It doesn't belong to you. And if you want to take it, then you can steal it, but understand the fact that it's stealing. And as far as I'm concerned, you're a culture vulture. You will be labeled as such and you have the, Everybody has the right to label you as such. Culture vulture, period. All you want is the good parts of somebody's culture, not the negative, bad stuff. Everybody wanna be black, right? Everybody wanna have our rhythm, but they don't want our blues. Y'all want all of our good stuff, but when it comes time to stand up for us, to stand next to us, to uplift us, you don't. Now I'm gonna help out white people because People keep making jokes like white people don't have a culture, okay? People make that joke because y'all keep stealing other people's culture as if you're looking for something to be your own. It's like you're trying to make your culture. So I'm gonna help out white people real quick and be like, y'all, you do have a culture, okay? You do. Now, it's I cannot help that your culture is laced in hatredism, colonialism, and racism. I'm sorry. Y'all have impacted every nation on this planet from the Japanese, the Chinese, the Arabic, like white people have gone after damn near every nation on this planet. But white Americans, y'all do have a culture, okay? And I, I, I will erase, we'll negate the bad stuff, okay? Because I know we're trying to get, like you guys are very uncomfortable with the negative aspects of your culture. Okay, we'll, we'll toss that aside for a second. But y'all do have a culture. When you think America, American white culture, you think the pilgrims, the founding fathers, cowboys, you guys actually do have a culture. Now, the problem is, is that you don't think it's cool. You have a culture, you just don't wanna rep it because you don't think it's fashionable, you don't think it's fun. That's on you to make it cool. Black people's culture was not always fun or fashionable. People rejected us for years. We had to make it cool. So instead of going after the rest of the world's culture, why don't you try making your own culture cool? I have seen people wear, um, what is it? The pilgrim boots have been in, in and out of fashion for years. Uh, cowboy style, what, um, like Western type style has been in and out of fashion for years. Like the plaid lumberjack thing has been in and out of fashion for years. White people have a culture, y'all just need to embrace it and make it into something. Stop, just stop stealing everybody else's. That's all I'm trying to convey. Stop taking people's stuff. Stop it, you look, ridic you look ridiculous. Japanese geishas also have a signature hairstyle, a hairstyle that I could identify anywhere on anyone. So black people are not the only ones that have hairstyles that are specific to our culture. Other cultures do have the same thing as well. Japanese geishas have it. I've been through geisha training, not a full thing of geisha training, but I have been through geisha training. Um, and it's not just a hairstyle. There are specific steps that have to be incorporated. There are specific items and hair accessories that have meaning. So just because you guys have perceived that something means nothing doesn't mean that it is that way. And you need to respect that. Respect other people's cultures, respect the opinions of the people whose culture you're stealing from. Stop getting mad at black people for getting pissed off because we have every right to be pissed off. And stop supporting these clown people, these caricatures, these wanigas who wanna be black people. Like stop supporting you. So when you get the chance to check somebody of your own community doing something stupid, please do that. Cause I do it to black people all the time. I have no problem checking a black per person, but it is on you to like police your own culture. Don't let people in your culture misrepresent your culture or your people. Like, please get your brothers and sisters, get your mom and dad, get your kids. All right, get them. So we don't have to get them. I don't want to have to check your family. Do it yourselves. If you guys can do that for me, I will consider you guys an ally. I know we have white allies and I appreciate you guys. Okay. Thank 
you. I'm supposed to be filming Miss Universe in a couple of hours. So I gotta get back to the girls who really deserve my attention, those glorious queens. And I will see the rest of you later. Thanks for tuning in. Follow me on social media. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments in the description box below. Be nice. Um, enjoy the new word, Wanaga. Yeah. <laughs> and I need to like redo this nail because I got so mad that I popped off a fingernail. Like that's how upset I was. So now I need to fix this before Miss Universe because this is unacceptable. So I gotta go. But thank you for tuning in. I love your support. I love you guys being here. I love having people to talk to. Thanks for letting me vent. Like once again, Danielle Brigoli, she can catch me outside. All right. Okay. Love you. See you later. Bye.